webinar, Best Workplaces for Commuters Works for Your Business. I'm Kelly Woodward, Director of Sales and Marketing for the Dulles Area Transportation Association. DATA is a TMA, a Transportation Management Association, working to mitigate congestion on area roads by encouraging employers to promote employee alternatives to commuting in a single occupancy vehicle, or SOV as we call them. These, these alternatives might include teleworking, which we're all far more familiar with than we ever de deemed possible, um, ride sharing, taking transit, biking, or walking. I'm going to let our moderator for this session, Tinder Kolsla, Business Investment Manager for Europe for the Fairfax County Economic Development Authority, introduce our outstanding panelists who will give you all the information you need to become a best workplace for commuters. Activities that qualify employers for best workplaces provide a blueprint for how companies can encourage sustainable transportation, support recruitment and retention of the best and brightest, and utilize web-based tools to help calculate overall financial, environmental, and traffic improvements associated with commuter benefits. By the way, I'd like to also encourage all of you, this is this is my plug, um, to consider sponsoring or participating in our annual golf tournament this year on June 25th at the Westfields Golf Club, benefiting both data and this year, the Northern Virginia Veterans Association. Details are at www.birdies, that's B-I-R-D-E-A-S-E.com backslash drive for veterans. Jatinder, thank you so much for taking the time to serve as our moderator today. Please introduce our panelists. Thank you, Kelly. Good morning, everyone. I want to start by thanking the Dallas Area Transportation Association for hosting this webinar today. Um, as Kelly said, my name is Jatinder Kosla. I'm with Fairfax County Economic Development Authority. Our organization promotes investment and business growth in Fairfax County in order to expand the commercial tax base that helps pay for public services in Fairfax County. We have a great lineup of speakers for you today um, on the Best Workplaces for Commuters National Recognition Program. Before we start and I introduce our first speaker, I would like to go over a few housekeeping items. First off, this webinar is being recorded. You are welcome to use the Q&A function at any time during the presentation to ask questions. If questions are for a specific panelist, Please indicate this in the Q&A, and all of the questions will be answered at the end of all presentations. So now back to the exciting part, the program itself. As the title suggests, the overarching theme of our webinar is to go over how employers can qualify and obtain the designation of best workplaces for commuters. This is especially important in the context of employee attraction and retention in our region. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first presenter, Philip Winters. Philip is the Director of Transportation Demand Management Program at the Center for Urban Transportation Research at the University of South Florida. He has 40 years of experience in transportation demand management research, training, and technical assistance. Philip, you have the floor. Thank you, Joe Tinder. Um, Luke, will you bring up the slide, please? Great, thank you. Go ahead to the next slide. I, I definitely want to thank uh, the uh, data for inviting me to speak today on Best Workplaces for Commuters. This is a program we've run since 2007. And in fact, this past year was our most successful year uh, yet with over 450 workplaces, universities, and sites. A few of our current Best Workplaces for Commuters members, or BWC, as we were often refer to it. There's a scattering of uh, a sample, if you will, of the variety, both locally and nationally, as you can see. And some of these names may be very familiar to you, and some maybe not so familiar. And that just gives you a, a full range of our membership of large uh, multinational, international companies, but also very local companies that believe in. Uh, the mission of best workplaces to make to offer commuter benefits that benefit their employees and benefit their businesses. Next, please. Now, um, part of this is a recognition that commuting has effects on workplaces. Most people think, uh, what, what does commuting have to do with my business? But if you start looking at some of these samples, like 23% of the workers quit a job because of a tough commute. I guess the, even the question here might be how many workers will change jobs because they're required to come back to a, a work site full time versus maybe telework part time. You're also looking at uh, things like 
back pain, fatigue, and worry all increase with time spent commuting. And that that wears on employees and may have employees change jobs simply because of the commute situation. And finally, just to give an idea of in Virginia overall, 43% of all the adults in Virginia households have substituted some or all of their typical in-person work for telework because of the coronavirus. So you get a lot more people exposed to what the benefits of telework will be. Next, please. Why focus on workplace? Well, uh, employers actually influence a lot of employee commute behavior. They do so by setting work schedules, determining who can or cannot telework, providing incentives like transit fare discounts or subsidies. They set parking policy, who gets parking and or how much a subsidy might be provided. And they offer other, uh, other incentives such as bicycle amenities, lockers and storage facilities. Uh, shower facilities for those who bike to work. Now, we, we also recognize that <clears throat> not all employers are the same. They're faced with a range of motivations for why they're interested in this. Now, this survey was done before COVID was, was with us, but it gives you a general idea of everything ranging from traffic congestion to requests from employee, concern with employee productivity and employee health, government relations, re re government regulations in some parts of the country that require them to comply. So that's why a lot of employers are interested in, in providing commute benefits to, of all types to their employees. Next, please. Now, there are a variety of strategies on the commute programs that they can offer, certainly on telework being perhaps the most prominent lately. Uh, there you're seeing increases in productivity and decreases in overhead. We've got employers saying that they may uh, curtail their need for renting some office space because they can work part-time. They can have their employees work part-time from home. They could offer flexible work hours, which actually can contribute to reduced absenteeism. Um, they can offer subsidies and pre-tax benefits that provide reduction of payroll costs to the employer and actually can reduce the need for parking and parking subsidies. Next, please. Now, just to give you an idea of the 450 plus employers that have been designated in 2021 as a best workplace for commuter, Virginia has the fourth highest number. And a lot of that is due to everything going on in Fairfax County. And I'll, I'll let, I'll let uh, Marcus and others talk about everything pretty exciting going up in Fairfax here. Next. Uh, now, what the employers offer also can vary. Now, there, there's two general categories. One is primary benefits and one is supporting benefits. They're required to have one of these uh, primary benefits that you see on your screen. And as you can see, the, in, in some cases, they have more than one. Uh, but telework and transit passes are right now by far the highest share of um, primary benefits that employers have selected, but they can also offer employee shuttles. And on the far right, you'll see a, a bar that says equivalent benefit. We do give the option for employers, if they're offering something that doesn't fit one of these categories very well, they can go ahead and say, this is what we're doing. Would this qualify as a primary benefit for our, for our um, employees? Next, please. And on the supporting benefits, these are, they need to offer, this is a sampling of, the, of them, but this, they need to offer uh, uh, at least three of them. In many cases that may be provided by another agency, an emergency ride home or guaranteed ride home program is one, but secure bike parking and showers and lockers are very prevalent among our best workplaces for commuters. But you, you do also see things like subsidies at a lower level than what's required as a primary benefit. Um, offering flexible work hours to uh, that uh, a fair portion of their employees participate. Okay, next please. Now that the benefits of membership for best workplaces for commuters is a national list release that we present uh, typically in January every year. Uh, you'll be employers will be allowed exclusive use of the BWC logo and brand to help promote it. We won't. We'd like to have this recognized that when you have a job app, for example, and you, you label that you're a best workplace for a commuter that an individual will clue into that and say, wow, I might get be either work from home or maybe I'll be able to get a free 
uh, or discounted transit pass or some other incentive uh, that this employer cares. Uh, we also offer, uh, uh, go back please Luke, so offer, offer free seat in our telework certificate program. That's a self-paced course to help employers understand how to either manage a remote work, a distributed workforce or how to work as a distributed employee. A free seat in our commuter choice certificate program that's offered uh, around the country. That's a $250 value unto itself. Um, a free access to our webinars and a few other uh, incentives, including benchmarking reports and access to our other training programs. Next, please. The application itself uh, is, is rather simple to do. Uh, it may look a little overwhelming initially just simply because it's online, but as you can kind of get a glimpse on the right, a lot of it is simple. Yes, no, do we have this or don't we have this? Like the supporting benefits. Uh, you just look, read those sentences and check the ones that you have. And as long as you have three, you've met the requirement. There is no uh, fee to actually apply. There is a fee to belong, but if you have a doubt that whether you qualify, you don't have to pay. We will review it for free, typically within 24 or 48 hours for review. Um, if you have multiple sites in the same locate in the same metro area, for example, that essentially have the same benefits, you could put them also on the same uh, application, so you don't need to fill out a separate application for every separate location. Now, if you have a, another location in another city or metro area that may offer different benefits, yes, you'd be asked to complete a separate form. And again, we, the national list release that we publicize will be in late January 2022. We're opening up the application process on June 1st, and it ends on November 30th. Um, and all, one point I wanted to stress too, you, you can go to bestworkplaces.org and see what the, the, the current list is, but you can also have your partners like Marcus and other and Kelly to help you go through the application form. And often that's what we have. The partner will sit through and, and actually talk through either on the phone or via webinar. Next, please. So that's all I have today and I look forward to entertaining any questions you may have and looking forward to the other speakers. Next. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Um, we will now look at how Fairfax County companies can qualify for this national recognition. And to go over this, we have Marcus Moore, who is responsible for employer outreach and works for Fairfax County's Transportation Services Group. He helps human resources and benefits managers establish commuting benefits and assistance programs, including telework programs for their employees. All services are provided free of cost to, pub to the public as well as to employers. So if you live or work in Fairfax County, Marcus and the Transportation Services Group can provide you with information on all your commuting options so you can make a smart choice about how you travel to work. With that, Marcus, take it away. Thank you, Jatinder, for that introduction. Um, and I wanna also thank uh, Data for having us here speaking today. Um, just as, as, as mentioned, you know, my responsibility as a employer outreach specialist for the county of Fairfax is we are here, you know, essentially to help employers get, get their staff members to work easily. Um, we're responsible for providing information on commuting, whether it be uh, carpooling, van pooling, transit, uh, teleworking, any things of that nature. Um, as we all have, have went through this past year with the pandemic, of course, teleworking has been a highlight uh, as far as getting people to kind of get a better feel for what teleworking uh, represents and how, how beneficial it can be. Um, unfortunately, we had to learn it under these circumstances, but um, you know, that, that's, that kind of tied into my role as a specialist, just to kind of get the word out and kind of help people to get a better understanding of, of um, how these programs work. Uh, as far as the Best Workplaces for Commuters program, uh, I'm really excited about this program. We've been doing it for a number of years. Um, we can go to the next slide here as well. Um, what we do as at CCS is for each year, we bring a number of different employers who have implemented these high level programs that include transit benefits, biking and walking programs, teleworking, um, alternative work schedules. We bring them in front of the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors to receive recognition for those efforts. Um, it's really important for us here in Fairfax just to kind of let people know um, 
that they're appreciated for their efforts. Um, it has helped to ease some of the congestion that we have here in, in the county. Also with us being in, in, in Fairfax County and just in this, in this region in general, we have one of the most highly congested areas that has, has been away for a number of years. So we find that these, these programs help to kind of combat, combat some of those issues. And it just kind of brings value to a business. Um, when I first started doing this type of uh, uh, outreach and work a number of years back, um, I was kind of, I came to find interest that, that a, lot of, a lot of the employers, maybe some of them on their website, they would kind of list some of the programs and benefits that they have in place. So of course you would have things listed like your, your medical and your dental benefits and things of that nature. But um, what I came to find out is not, not a lot of businesses would promote some of the strategies that they had in place when it came to commuting. So, you know, what we did is we would go to them and kind of have, have discussions on why these programs held so much value when it came to recruitment and retention. And what we've done since then is we, we, we tapped into our partnership with uh, the Best Workplace for Commuters program. And we wanted to find a way to uh, highlight those programs once they were implemented and kind of give, give businesses a chance to recruit those high level uh, staff members that they were interested in. Uh, so again, we bring these, we bring, uh, this list of employers who have reached that excellence and bring them in front of the Fairfax County Board of, Recon uh, Board of Supervisors to give them that recognition. Uh, next slide, please. So just kind of give everyone a little bit of background on our promotion here. Uh, what we did is we, we are uh, in the process of our 11th year promotion here now. Um, our outreach kind of consists of meeting an employer we would go to and we kind of get a feel for what they have as far as uh, commuter programs in place and we would kind of get a feel for what they would need. Um, that's one of the big important things. We, we, we try to focus on the areas of need. So if you have an employer that's obviously on a transit line or they have a available bus service, we will focus on those kind of, those kind of strategies because it benefits them in their location. Um, in, a, in a situation of an employer who may be um, kind of further back where they're not in a place where they have access to that, we kind of focus on things such as van pooling to maybe, uh, Kind of assist their employees on getting to work or telework strategies or you know uh helping them to set up a shuttle service which can maybe transport their staff from a you know generally close uh, uh metro station and kind of get them onto their work site uh for us it's important to to kind of let people know how those how those how those packages can kind of be set up so as a part of our promotion we'll go in and in the process of trying to uh, kind of give them more feedback on how they can qualify for this award We'll come in, we'll give them a consultation on their program, and we'll also assist them on implementation of any of these strategies that may benefit them towards reaching that uh, recognition status. And then, of course, we found that a, a number of different employers find a great value in being able to receive that recognition in front of our county board. Next slide, please. So I kind of want to kind of speak a little bit about some of the, and, and Phil kind of touched on a great deal of this. Some of the things that we, we, we find have been of value to kind of encourage people to participate in this award. Um, so of course you get the national recognition and as a part of Fairfax County, you receive that local recognition, which is, you know, seem to be very beneficial for all of our employers. You receive the, the, the award status, you receive the plaques, you receive the certif certifications. You also get to participate in internal awards within the best place as, as a local member, which is called the Race to Excellence. You also get the opportunity to connect and network with other employers that may be in your line of business or may not be. But the good thing about that is it allows you to kind of get a feel for what other businesses throughout the nation are doing. So, you know, you happen to interact with somebody that may be running a specific program that maybe they have created that works for them. You can kind of look at their packages and kind of discuss how that may be beneficial to you, uh, to you as well. So the good thing about that is it kind of gets you engaged with other businesses and you can kind of tap into, um, you know, different strategies and kind of find out, you know, how things may be uh, able to be enhanced at your location. Uh, one of the, the big things that we have found that has been uh, an encouragement to get people to participate as well is, as a part of our promotion, uh, we do pay for the, uh, the membership fees. Um, now it has here listed that we pay for two years of membership, which is actually correct as well. So once we bring you up to receive this recognition in front of the board, we'll cover your membership fee that year. And then at the end of the year, you'll receive a, uh, a notification on whether or not you want to renew your membership. And if you uh, decide to participate that second year, we'll cover your membership again for that second year. And this is just something that we found that um, is important to us to do because it, it, it allows us to, to show just how important these programs are. 
And so just to give a thank you to these businesses taking advantage of, of our promotion and, and helping us to get the word out about their activities. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so this one, I just want to kind of give a few highlights. Uh, as of 2020, we have, we have 114 uh, businesses within Fairfax County that have been recognized for this award. As Phil mentioned, and, and this is something that was kind of new to me as well, that we are the uh, fourth most rep represented state. But what I also can speak to is, is for one specific jurisdiction in a, in a state, we have the most representation of uh, businesses that have been recognized for this award. Um, another highlight that I wanted to speak to is, is um, when the program first started, we, we didn't have a general idea of how things were going to go. Um, it, was, it was in the early stages of BWC, as, as Phil mentioned, they started back in 2007. Our promotion started back in, in uh, 2010. And we, we, we wanted to kind of set a realistic goal, but also to give ourselves um, some room for motivation. So we set a goal for reaching 50 uh, awardees by the fifth year, which ended up you know, being a goal that we reached in 2015. And we had a special uh, celebration where we would bring all those 50 back. And we had a large uh, presentation where we just kind of gave them um, a thank you for just participating in our promotion. It allowed them to receive a secondary uh, recognition in front of the board for just being um, a promotion that was so successful. And we, you know, we were really excited about that award. Uh, next slide, please. So here I'm gonna kind of just talk to just how the application work. As Phil mentioned, sometimes the application has, uh, and, and I've, I've kind of come across this with some of the, the uh, employers that I work with. Sometimes the application was, uh, yeah, go back. Sometimes the application comes across as a bit of uh, intimidating. So, you know, what we'll do is as a part of our promotion, we actually work with the businesses uh, we'll go through the application step by step to kind of let them know, you know, based on our discussions, how to complete that application and, you know, how that works. So for all of you kind of wondering what the qualifications are, as it's listed here, we have a number of different strategies. You have your telework, you have your transit benefits, you have your van pool benefits, your pre-tax subsidies, your compressed work weeks, your, your parking cash out, your shuttles, uh, things like that. So these, these are considered your primary benefits, which you only need one to qualify. Uh, the reason why these are considered primaries is these are the ones that contribute to either the most uh, trip reduction efforts or contribute to, to, to the most high level programs as far as getting, getting people to work. And uh, then you have your secondary benefits. These would be things such as, uh, you know, bike parking, uh, showers and lockers for, for those people that are biking in and it gives them opportunity to go in and clean up before going to work. Uh, you have on-site amenities if you have like lunch services or uh, dry cleaning services or things of that nature. So these are, these are your, your lower level programs as it contributes to, to trip reduction, but they're just as important because as a package, they're all put together and allows that company to have a, a number of different things that, that, that kind of gives people that benefit on leaving that car at home and trying to do something different. Uh, the good thing about our promotion is again, we, 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 take, we take a lot of effort in, in, in uh, providing strategies just on a normal day-to-day -day basis in our outreach work to kind of get that primary in place. Or we come across businesses that maybe already have uh, the primary in place and they just not kind of need those secondary benefits. Um, as a part of our promotion and some of the, lo the local programs that we have, such as the Guaranteed Ride Home and the uh, Community Connections Ride Matching Database, these are two programs that we, we can actually supply um, in the application process. So these are, these are, these are programs that the, the employer doesn't necessarily have to have in place that we can actually come and we can provide them, um, you know, how to, how to put these programs in place for the application process. So it makes, makes it so much easier for them and it takes a lot of load off them if they can actually just kind of have that primary and we can kind of assist them with the secondary benefits. And, you know, that allows them to kind of smoothly uh, transition through the application process. Um, the good thing about it is these are just your minimums. You have your one minimum for your primary and, and your three secondary. But the good thing about it is anything that you have beyond that is just, you know, is just great on top of that. Next, uh, next uh, slide, please. So what I did here is from this point, I just have a couple pictures just to kind of show the group, just to kind of to give you a little bit more background on our program. So this right here is a map that we created um, that kind of show the, uh, the different Fairfax jurisdictions, I mean, excuse me, the Fairfax um, locations where these employers were and where they fell within the, the, the board districts. So as you can see, we have a great representation of um, employers throughout the county. Um, of course, you're gonna have certain, certain areas that are gonna be a little bit more populated just because the, the business areas are a little bit more uh, populated in those locations. So you have your Tyson's area, you have your Reston, you have your Herndon. Those are gonna be um, 
a little bit more well represented, but we do uh, make it a point to kind of reach out to businesses all throughout uh, Fairfax County, large or small. There's not a, a, a focus solely on large businesses, not a great deal of uh, effort goes into working with larger businesses because it represents locations where there are far more commuters going into those areas. Uh, but it's important to us to reach out to the smaller businesses as well to give them recognition, to help them set up packages that are ideal for their, uh, their, their situation. Uh, next slide, please. Um, again, like I said, we have a, a, a number of different employees that we have recognized uh, on, a, on a yearly basis. We have, I would say, probably a average of about 10 employers per year that we recognize to reach those goals. So these slides just kind of represent some of the companies that have been recognized over the years that you got, you know, for everyone to see. Uh, the good thing about this promotion as well is I, I found that in the process of putting this information out and, and, um, and marketing these programs, it kind of stirs up a bit of competition. So we may have a company that you know, receives information about our promotion and, and they may see a company that's, that's in their line of business. And next thing you know, I get a call and they're like, hey, Marcus, you know, what, what can we do to get involved? So that kind of makes my job a bit easier just to kind of to kind of have that competitive juices flowing because it's important. You know, it's, it's important to be able to to let, you know, the public know what you're doing to contribute to your your, your region. It's important to let the, the public know that you guys have the programs in place that are, that are important to the staff. Um, for our area and for myself, and, and, and I'm sure for most of, uh, of us that commute, that commute in this area, it's important to have these type of strategies in place to kind of limit some of the traffic that we all deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Next slide, please. Again, these are a number of different, I think 2016 represented the year that we had the, the least amount of participation. Not for sure exactly what that particular year was about, but um, as you can see, we continue to have a, a pretty good streak of participants each year. Uh, next slide. And this one right here is represents our year up to uh, 2019. This past year with COVID, we wasn't able to have the uh, promotion under normal circumstances, obviously. Um, but what we plan on doing is this year is, is for everyone that we have on board for 2020, and then for our current promotion that is in place now, we're gonna do a combined effort. And, and uh, if things work out as we expect, then we'll be hopefully, hoping to have a, uh, another on-site in-person um, recognition awards again this year. Uh, next slide. So um, just to kind of give you a little bit of, this is, this is one of the most in, uh, things that's been pretty important for some of the businesses as well, is to get that photo op, that photo op with the, uh, with the Board of Supervisors. These are just a couple shots that I took. Uh, you have one on here on the bottom left. This is with our department director, uh, Tom Bashani. And then the ones at the top here, these are just a couple uh, businesses that were recognized and had the photo op with our uh, former chairman at the time. Uh, Sharon Boulevard. Next slide. And then he, these are just a, pictures, a couple pictures that I dropped in just to kind of give you a, a couple visuals of what we did. Um, I'm, I'm also excited to let you know that in addition to the, uh, the five-year goal that we met, we also, you know, represented on the picture here in the bottom left, we also reached the goal of, of 100 employees, which is something that we were really excited about. So we had a celebration uh, where it's shown here where we brought everybody back and I would say we had a pretty good representation. We got, I want to say we got back at least 60 to 65 of the, the past employers over a year. And I can tell you that that's definitely a task of reaching back to people, you know, that you've spoken to seven or eight years ago to kind of let them know and see if they can come back to uh, receive that another recognition. So that was, a, that was a, uh, some, a, something I was pretty, pretty proud about individually and, and also for my team just to kind of be able to, to kind of pull those things together. Uh, next slide. And here on the last slide, so for anybody that has interest on, you know, finding out if your business is eligible for this award or just kind of learning a little bit more about it, having our team come in and maybe give, your, give you a company assessment on, on transportation benefits and, you know, teleworking and, and whatever it may be to see if we can maybe assist you or maybe kind of help to enhance in any type of way. Um, you know, my contact information is here. And then we also have a little bit more information for those on our websites, for those that are interested in, you know, some of the things that uh, we're doing to try to make, you know, make things easier and safe as possible during the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic recovery. We have links here to information that you can kind of read up on and kind of see what's being done and, and other resources that we can uh, provide for you to tap into um, to kind of just kind of help make those better decisions and kind of get a feel for, you know, uh, you know how, to, how to progress and, and, and kind of get back to somewhat of a normal uh, as we move forward. Next slide. And that actually, it might be my last one there actually. 
Thank you, Marcus. Um, indeed, you know, it was news to me as well that, you know, just the sheer amount of companies that apply for this program from our region. Um, and as somebody who works with employers, you know, I know uh, how much it is a matter of pride when they show up for their uh, award ceremony. So Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, one, and one last thing that I can also add is we, we, we've talked to our jurisdictional partners about this program and I think as of today, I know Arlington has taken advantage of, of creating a, a promotion for their jurisdiction as well, as well as Loudoun County. So we're trying to, to, to get the word out and, and spread it throughout the region and hopefully get more and more people the opportunity to take advantage of it. Great. And, and Marcus, I know we're, we're in May right now. Companies are still eligible to apply for this, right? Yes. For the, we're, we're in the process of doing the 20, uh, 2021 promotion. So under normal circumstances, we take applications all the way to about... Um, Thanksgiving, and that's usually when we cut off for our local. I know, I know Phil and his team, they have a different um, timeline as far as their applications, but for the Fairfax County promotion, we, we, we take applications all the way through the, the end, of, um, end of November. And then, you know, under normal circumstances, we would have our, our awards promotion um, in December. And in most cases, usually the early part of December before the holidays. Well, thank you, Marcus. Oh, Marcus's contact information uh, was also posted in the chat in case um, you want to uh, copy paste that for your purposes. Please feel free to contact Marcus. Um, so we have a good overview of the program from Phil. Uh, Marcus was kind enough to share how co Fairfax County companies can apply for it. Um, and um, our last presenter um, on this particular panel will be a case study and um, from Tyndale Oliver on how they have implemented this program at their work site. So we now welcome Ali Ankadovich, who is a senior planner with Tyndale Oliver's community planning and design team based in downtown Tampa, Florida. She specializes in policy, case study, and interview-based research to determine best practices and actionable vetted planning solutions. Her work spans affordable housing, transportation, parks, land use, urban design, and development. Take it away, Ali. Great, thank you so much to Jatinder and thank you to Data for having us here today. I'm really pleased to be with you. And um, I'm just gonna take a moment to see if my presentation will come up. Excellent. So as Jatinder mentioned, I'm with Tyndale Oliver. We're based a little bit further down south. We've been designated since 2008, so over 10 years. We were founded in 1989, and you'll see we're based in Tampa, but we have a number of other offices that are listed there on the right. Um, and our industry is actually very linked to commuting and transportation. We provide professional services in transportation, community planning and design, transit and public finance, and we're working with a lot of public sector local governments. Next slide. So why did we decide to get certified? What are the benefits and why should you get certified? Um, you'll hear a lot of the same uh, that we've heard earlier. Recruitment is a, big, is a big reason why, and we highlight our uh, designation as a best workplace for commuters in our handbook um, when we do orientation and as we're doing interviews. Um, so that really helps attract top talent. Um, we also are in the industry, as I mentioned. So we not only wanna talk the talk, but we also wanna walk the walk or any other mode you wanna put in there of getting around. Um, so what we advise to our clients uh, in terms of commuting and trying to do alternative commuting practices is something we wanna practice as well. And that lends us some credibility. As Marcus highlighted really well, recognition and, and being recognized in our local community is also a big benefit of being certified. And on the flip side of that, I know everybody is on social media now and, and promoting and marketing. And so being certified and also the supplementary programming that we do that complements our certification um, is something that we can rely on when we're looking for content and trying to get the word out about our company. Next slide. So here's a little bit more detail on what our uh, program entails. And so I'll give you a minute to kind of skim through this first uh, session, uh, section of our benefits here. 
and what you may notice about this, um, first I'll highlight the biking part of it because that's what I participate in. Um, I bike to work pretty regularly, at least pre COVID. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. A big part of this was having those facilities on site, especially showers and lockers to store things. And we've had a great partnership with our building management company, Denholtz, um, to make that happen. So there's a little bit of partnering that went into that to make that successful. Uh, the other thing I want to highlight is our transit program. Um, we are certified through our Tampa office, but we have expanded our paid transit passes to all of our offices. And this has been really key with the great transit access uh, down in Fort Lauderdale and Baltimore, for instance. Uh, there's commuter rail through Tri-Rail and MDOT uh, with commuter buses and, and services. So that's a that's been really helpful. Next slide. And here's a few more of the options and, and benefits that we offer. I'll, I'll say that the flexible schedule and the telework have been critical, as mentioned, during um, the COVID-19 pandemic. And it really helps accommodate a lot of different employee needs. Um, so maybe it's just uh, whether you work better in your own space at home, whether you have kids. So this really allows for that flexibility and, and catering to the diversity of lives that people live. I'll also note the downtown location and just the location in general of our offices. Um, that's been a big help in terms of having access to different amenities and different transportation options. So something to keep in mind. And maybe you're even located near a river. You'll see there on the right, some of our um, employees commuted to work by canoe once. Um, so we get creative. Next slide. I wanna go into a little bit more on how telework was really critical for us uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we were doing one work from home day per week up until March, 2020. Next point. And then of course COVID hit and that was such a challenging time and continues to be for many people in our community and nationally and globally. Of course, it was just such a big deal and, and something to figure out how to transition and, and respond to. Um, so because of our prior experience with telework and some additional capacity we had to expand that, we were able to do a very smooth transition to full remote. And there were a lot of um, benefits uh, that were maintained or enhanced. Um, so our productivity uh, stayed still pretty high from what, from what I understand from our management. Um, and we also found new ways to connect. So you'll say, see there on the right, all the different events um, that uh, with the help of Andrea and our marketing team and a lot of different folks pitching in, we had some successful connecting and I'll say it even enhanced our ability to, to connect with our different offices. So just enhancing some of those relationships that were uh, maybe not as, as strong or as regularly tended to as they were before. Next point. And so because of all of the success that we had, we are adjusting our telework program. We're going, as of July 1st, we're going to be increasing the allowed work from home days to three. And we're looking forward to all of continuing the positive benefits of that and also traffic, parking, pollution uh, reduction benefits uh, that, that will come with that. Next slide. The last couple points I wanna touch on are some of the additional programming um, and programming promotion that we do that complements and supports our Best Workplaces for Commuter program. And so this first set of events that you see here are uh, really community-based, a lot of community events and, and events that get people out and trying things um, that they might not have tried before in terms of different ways of getting around. And so I just wanna highlight that even if you're not having employees uh, pick a certain way to get to work for commuting on the regular, um, there's still a lot of supplementary programs you can do to get people trying new things and turn them on to different ways of getting around, like taking bike, like taking transit. And even with something like telework, maybe if people are exposed to those things, they can start biking or taking transit um, around where they live. Uh, so there's definitely a benefit to that um, that complements the commuting aspect of this. Next slide. 
And then the last point I want to highlight are um, industry summits. So these are uh, events that are more transportation focused, maybe they're safety or housing focused. I, housing is a big component of, of where people live and what options they have to get to work. Um, so we of course participate in these because this is the industry that we work in. But I'll note that there's also a business case for this in terms of being engaged through that and influencing what's happening in your broader community. Um, and that can be either directly as a business or through an association, a business association, a business improvement district. I think there's a real value to being tapped into these sorts of events locally. Um, and we've certainly seen that. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions about this during the Q&A and I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Ali. Kayaking to work, well, that's one I haven't heard of before. <laughs> Very nicely done. Um, at this point, I would like to invite all speakers to please switch on their cameras so we can go into the Q&A section. Um, audience, please feel free to type in questions um, that you may have. Please feel free to mention who they are for. Um, in the meantime, you know, I have, you know, a few questions that, you know, um, I um, would like to go over. So one of the questions that we get, and, and Philip, maybe, you know, you could answer this one is, um, you know, a company would say we have multiple locations in the area. So can we apply all at once? And is there a fee for each location? Um, good question. Very good question. And we do get that quite a bit. Um, if, if all the locations within the same metro area are um, offering the same, essentially the same benefits. There may be some small variation because of where they're located, but essentially the same ones. Yes, they can apply on the same application and include it in a single fee, it, uh, which is, um, as Marcus has indicated, is, is Fairfax County pays for for the first two years. If they're located around the country and have different uh, incentives, it would be a different application in a and a fee for that location. Thank you, Phil. Um, the other question that often comes up is, you know, um, a site manager will say, or an employer will say, we're located in a development with many other employers. Um, and the property manager of that, of that site provides facilities such as bikes and shower facilities, reserve spaces for carpools and access to transit options. Um, you know, with the coming inline silver metro, I think this is going to become more and more prevalent, especially for employers that are located around that, um, a certain radius of those metro stations. So are, are they eligible? Uh, yeah, um, a great question, too. Um, yes, yeah, so I didn't, I really didn't touch on at all, I think, our best sites program and our best, um, best universities for commuters designations, too under the best sites program is kind of designed for those that are in a development like that, where there might be multiple employers um, where the property, either the developer and or the property manager have been offering a variety of different strategies to influence the commute so that they can, uh, the developer or the property manager certainly could apply for that whole location of that development. And the criteria is a little bit different. I won't go into that, but it's the same sort of checklist type program. The other added benefit is if you're an employer located within an area that is designated as a best site, you can also apply to have your company or your organization identified as a best workplace. And actually the cost is half. Uh, so it's kind of recognizing, and we, we do recognize that they're all sorts of different locations, different employers, different sizes. and um, sometimes being a best site is um, something that, that they would qualify for where they may not qualify as a best workplace. And, and Marcus, you know, this is directed to you. Would that be something that the county works with the best sites program as well? Or is that separate from the employer side? No, we, we uh, as a part of our promotion, we also do, um, we do outreach to best sites as well. I think we I'm trying to remember offhand. I think we, we, I know we have at least maybe four to five that have been recognized over the years. So um, we do take advantage of, of, of that resource as well. And it falls within the same uh, promotion as far as us covering their memberships. 
Great. Um, another question um, from an employer's perspective, and, and Phil um, and Ali, you're welcome to chime in on this if you've come across this as well, is, you know, employers say we promote carpooling and we provide the incentive, but is our organization then liable if um, employees are injured as passengers? Phil, you're on mute. I knew that would happen. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I'm no certainly no lawyer, um, but the, the Virginia State Code actually has a section dealing with the liability for the employer. Essentially, if the essentially if an employer is encouraging the use of these options, not forcing an employee to use a particular option, um, that they, they're not liable for injuries to passengers and other persons because the employer provides info or incentives or otherwise encourages that behavior. So that's section 46.2-1403. And so um, the, Virginia has done a very good job of, of, of uh, making it easy for employers to adopt such strategies for their employees, whether they're best workplaces or not. So. Great. Um, this question is for Ali. Ali, you know, I don't know if you were there when the when you initiated the program, but you know, was it easy to get buy-in from employees to kind of jump on board for this? And you know, what what was the um, what was the reaction from them? Yeah. So I've been a little bit more involved recently in terms of reapplying and kind of going and helping with that process. Uh, again, our marketing team and Andrea and our marketing team does a great job with that as well. Um, and so what, what I think I would highlight there is the fact that if you can, the more kind of options or flexibility that you can offer that um, you think will kind of realistically work for your business, I think that's where a lot of the buy-in comes in um, because then people have a choice. They can really tailor their, uh, their way of getting around and, and what they can do to what they need. Um, and so... I think that is a huge benefit to the program and, and how it's structured. Um, so I would definitely encourage people to take a look at the options and, and think about what they could offer um, and to provide that flexibility. Great. Um, and this question is for everybody. Um, if a company is a Best Workplaces uh, recipient, but they let their membership lapse, um, do they still, and they're still offering the programs, by the way, you know, the membership has lap, lapsed, programs are still in place, employees are taking advantage of this. Um, do they still need to reapply or is there a simple way to be reinstated for that? Usually on the renewals, what we do, for example, we'll, we'll notify, here's what we have on file for you. It, just go ahead and make an edit of anything that has changed or let us know. So it's, it's often not starting over from scratch. If they've lapsed for several years, yeah, they would probably have to complete the uh, application one more time. We do recognize with COVID causing all sorts of changes in worksite behavior. Um, that we're not taking, we're, we're not penalizing anybody for the result of say, we were offering a bus subsidy for everybody and now nobody was going to work and the bus service is curtailed or whatever. We're not penalizing that employer right now. We're basically ignoring 2000, as much as we can, ignoring 2020 and 20, early 2021. Hmm. And so actually that raises a, a good question about safety measures in place for people to feel safe when they're using public transportation. But what I wanna do at this point is, um, I, I don't have any more questions. I wanna turn it back to Kelly. And Kelly, you know, if you could talk a little bit about how data helps employers and sites um, to implement the program. So they've, they know the program, they've applied uh, for it through Marcus, what is data's role? And then um, if you could also go over some of the information resources about safety measures that are in place to keep employees, um, uh, that are in place to keep employees safe as they use public transit to get around our region, that would be great. And um, I will hand it back to you, Kelly. 
Thank you, Jatinder. Um, may I have the slide with the links on it, please? There you go. So, uh, there are a variety of resources that address safe commuting on all modes of transportation, not just car sharing or taking transit, whatever. So um, I'll make this slide available to everybody who registered so that you can go in and check um, and see what steps you should be taking um, to protect yourself on the mode that you're using to get to and from work. We also have a video of the legal issues of bringing employees back to the office during the COVID-19 era. Uh, it's a YouTube video and I will also share that link. So that should answer most of the questions you have. Uh, the DRPT guidance, which is the first one under additional resources has recently been updated and they're doing a fairly good job of keeping up to date with things that are going on in terms of, of safe commuting using COVID or during COVID. So, um, and data is available to help you in any way that you, that you need. Um, we're, we're here, we can provide assistance in Spanish and English. We can come in and do um, lunch and learns with your employees about safe commuting. There are all sorts of different ways that we can help you out. I mean, we are here to be your sort of one-stop resource um, for everything that's transportation oriented. So please don't hesitate to call on us. I will also share that information. Um, does anybody have any questions about the legal implications or anything? I'll try to answer them. I'm, I'm not a lawyer either, like Phil. No. Okay. Well, if, if there are no more questions, we're almost out of time anyway. I want to thank all our outstanding panelists for sharing their knowledge of best workplaces for commuters with us this morning. Um, excuse me. Those are the links that we've posted will be shared with you um, to help you get your employees back to work safely and confidently, whatever mode of transportation they suggest. And if you want assistance in qualifying for best workplaces for commuters, please call us. Um, our main number is 703-817-1307, extension two, and make an appointment with one of Data's mobility managers. As I said, our, our assistance is available in Spanish and in English. Um, and once again, I wanna thank you all for attending today. Uh, have a safe day and thank you specifically in, uh, to uh, Jatinder from the Fairfax County Economic Development Authority for taking time out every day to host this. My pleasure, Kelly. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Have Bye. a safe day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you.